Warning, this podcast contains sexual content, graphic language, and bodily functions. Get over it. I'm Heather Ann Gottlieb, and this is Dirty Girl, the podcast that shares stories from real women about their disgusting habits, taboo secrets, and unruly pastimes. Fart, burp, queef your little heart out. It's not a girl thing. It's not a boy thing. It's not a woman or a man thing. Everybody has a body, and it's disgusting, and we all just need to accept it and love it. How can we take this to the next level of disgusting? Things I hate about L.A. dating. Getting on a dating app and seeing nothing but headshots. Are you kidding me? You spent so much money on that, and you're putting it on your fucking Tinder? And it's everybody. Literally everybody puts their headshots up. I think it's stupid. Like, when I went on this date, he didn't know I was an actor. And I was that's so, that's amazing. I got that far, and I didn't have to tell him, you know? I didn't think to put balls in my mouth until my roommate was like, yeah, I suck my boyfriend's balls. And I was like, what? You do that? And she's like, yeah, guys like it. And I was like, I've never once thought to put a ball in my mouth. That's revolutionary. And then I realized, well, some of the balls that I've dealt with have been super hairy. Um, So that's probably why I was like, I'm not going to chew on that. Um, (laughs) But then... I started doing it because, not if it's hairy, and only if I want to. This is a stupid story. (laughs) This episode is a few different experiences from a few LA ladies. We touch on dating, entertainment, and the club scene. So last time I went out to WeHo, I went with Uh, my co-workers. This is a person, and I'm gonna call her Jessica. She and I spoke about a couple of good times we had in WeHo, which is short for West Hollywood. We started out at Pump, and I got really drunk on these Pump and Glories, and so... What's a Pump and Glory? It is Pump's drink. They won't tell you what's in it. So we end up going to some other bar where there's dancers. I just vaguely remember, like, standing by the stage, and whenever a dollar would fall, I would step on it, slide it to me and pick it up as if it was just like they were just handing them out. I don't know. I only took two. I do feel bad about it. But I dumped my bag out the next day and I just found like two crumpled up dirty dollar bills and then like a bunch of dirty napkins because I think I thought they were dollars. You know that pizza place on WeHo Mm -hmm. on Santa Monica? Yes. I ended up I was near there. I was overflowed. Blacked out, passed out, topless in the pizza place. (laughs) Wow. And I puked in a Santa fedora. That is a lot. Of, that's all three. Oh, I've puked in a hat before. All right. Well, I was in college. It was Halloween. I was dressed as the cat in the hat. You can see where this is going. And we go to a hookah bar. And I'm hanging out with all of these Marines because I that's was... That's such a thing 19-year-olds do is hookah bars, yes. by the way. And Marines. Um, they were buying hookah and they were, like, trying to show me tricks of, like, how to blow bubbles, how to do smoke rings, just, you know, cool hookah things. Not a sentence you say often. Um, and I just remember we were leaving and I just felt sick. And I was, we were giving them a ride back to their hotel. There's like three of them in the back and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, don't throw up, don't throw up, be okay, be okay. I was not okay. And I just threw everything up into this cat in the hat hat, which was my roommates and also very porous like it was not really catching anything as much as filtering and then the one texted me the next day and he was like oh I didn't think my kissing was so bad but by that point I had done like some Facebook stalking I was like yeah I wonder what your girlfriend in North Dakota thinks about it he was trying to be flirty about me throwing up profusely which says a lot about him you just want to hear like oh I hope you're okay I didn't want to hear anything (laughs) I just wanted like nope forget that night you know like some people mark maps like I'm gonna go to these places I have a lot of like I've puked in these places kind of things which I think is common but it's just like oh I remember throwing up there we're gonna hear from two comedians about the LA comedy scene spoiler alert it's full of straight white sweaty men first Elizabeth who you may know as the boob expert and next Amber I, the other day I was talking to an older comic and I was saying it's just disgusting that, you know, you look in 2017 in Los Angeles, the comedy store, the improv, uh, all of the big clubs, you take a look at their lineups and it's 85% men. And I can tell you there are a lot of fucking funny women in this 
work in this city and um, they don't get as you know when they are booked on those shows they're put up first so they have the worst possible position and I don't think it's a matter of women stepping up I think it's a matter of these male comics stepping up and saying you know what why isn't this uh, half women and half men the audiences are half women and half men why not? I mean, I've been to shows where guys get up and I hate their material, uh, but the woman will get up and I can relate to it. And, you know, I remember one comic saying during one set, he said, oh, I've got half the room here, but not the other half. And I'm like, yeah, you don't have the fucking women. That's what the deal is. So why don't we have the same number of men as we, and I think it's going to take men to do that. I think it's men who get booked who are going to have to go to these you know, the the higher ups, the guys who they want and say, you know, you need more women on here. And it's not to give women a favor. It's just to let women have a, a seat at the table. You know, it's like what Ruth Bader Ginsburg said about, you know, how many women on the Supreme Court is the right number. And she says, all of them. Yeah, that's what it should be. I love being a dirty woman. I just love, I love as a comedian, I love telling jokes that make me laugh. And like, when you've been in the comedy world for a while, it's, I, f I feel like this is very common for a lot of people. It's either the simplest and uh, silliest shit that makes you laugh, or it's the dirtiest, grossest, way over the line shit that makes you laugh. And it's never somewhere in the middle. So as a comedian, I'm not, I'm not the craziest about doing stand-up. I'm not in love with it, but I do enjoy doing it. And when I do enjoy doing it, it's because it's, I want to tell stories that make me laugh. And like, I want to go up there and have fun and like relive these stories and giggle with everybody. But I always start with the blowjob story. Amber's referencing this joke she tells in her act, which is actually the shitting in the shower thing. For more context, listen to the earlier episode of Dirty Girl. And I've had so many male comedians, like hosts of the shows that I'm doing or whatever, pull me aside afterwards and be like, girl, you can't start with that blowjob joke. Like you're turning off, you're turning off the, all the women in your audience. Like they would fucking know. And like, oh, you're just, you're so much better than that. Like you don't have to do a dirty joke. You don't have to do all dirty jokes. And I'm always kind of just like, yeah, fuck you, bro. Cause you wouldn't be saying that if I was a dude, like you wouldn't be like, Hey, don't start with that joke about going down on a girl. Nobody would ever say that. Right. And like, thanks for your unsolicited advice, number one. Yeah, your unsolicited advice. And also, like, the main problem that I have with it, which is like the deep seated problem that I have with women in comedy and all of the stereotypes that go with it, is he assumes that I'm turning off the women in the audience because I talk about giving blowjobs. And so he assumes that immediately makes other women not like me. Yeah. And I, I think that's. A, fucking wrong, and B, if it is right, then fuck those women. You're going to hate on me because I'm going to talk about doing the thing that we've all done at least once. Like, come on. We, we all on the same team. We all go through this. I'm trying to create a common, common ground where we can talk about all the shit we go through. Also, like, in your experience as a woman, thank you for telling me what women think, yeah. number one. Um, number two... It's more like, I am not telling this joke to turn people on. That's, no. <laughs> that's not my role to be sexy and turn you on. I'm trying to make you laugh. Right. Also, just you picturing cum in my nose, if that's what turns you on, you should actually probably call me because it happens a lot and we should go on a date. <laughs> I'm your girl. I'm your girl. Call me. But now, uh, now what I do, actually, I feel like the first guy that did that, because it's happened to me a couple times, but the first guy that did that, that pulled me aside afterwards and gave me the talk, I was like, oh, actually, you've given me a great gift because now I'm going to start all of my sets with saying a male comedian told me I shouldn't start with this joke because it'll turn women off. And then even if there are women in the audience that it would have turned off, they're immediately on my side. <laughs> They're immediately like, yeah, fuck that guy. Fuck him, right? Talk about blowjobs, girl. We on your side. <laughs> so it's great. He gave me a gift. He gave me a gift. So here's Joy. Uh, we chatted about what it's like to date in L.A. Our age group, people are starting to get engaged. Mm -hmm. People are starting to get married, get pregnant. 
And uh, unless you live in LA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, like, even so, I still have friends who are doing that. But they're, And I would say they're friends who, one, are not creative types. I think creative types in LA are really, like, it's it's harder to find someone and, like, feel consistent with them because it's like you get ins- you get attracted to like ideas and like um you know oh he did that really awesome one man show for fringe like oh he's got he's got a little something about him and then you find out like oh yeah most people think this and so he you know this person will have his pick of the tinder swipes <laughs> like, uh, and i mean i get it it sucks but you know it's about, I, I have to trust that there's a humanoid type out there. <laughs> and I say humanoid because if there's a half fish, half man out there who's single, um, you know, hit me up. There has to be someone who realizes the same thing. And they, like, I don't get impressed by a guy coming up to me and, like, just starting to dance on me. Like, that shit really freaks me out no matter how cute you are because that moment right there makes me think I'm like oh you don't have a personality (laughs) like you don't there's nothing going on up there that you can trust to talk to me with to like make me be like oh I kind of want to you want like do that fun thing where you're looking at each other after you had a fun conversation you're dancing and you slowly like merge into like one form that super down for not the whole hey there's there's my target not working well let's try your friend oh you and your friend are pretending to be lesbians now because you don't want to hit this that's okay too like yeah yeah i'm very aware if a man approaches me at a club Mm -hmm. if i turn him down who he immediately looks for next yes (laughs) i'm like it has nothing to do with who i am he's just Mm -hmm. horny yes he's horny and he's and he's it's robotic at a certain point and i feel like at least the older i get the more like, I can find someone physically attractive, mm-hmm. and the second I talk to them, yeah. can realize they have nothing going on in their mind. And it's very sad, because you're like, oh, life's been very kind to you for a lot of ways, because you're very attractive. But then you find out, like, you'll ha- he'll, he'll have this, like, garbage opinion. And you're just like, and I, I know that's, <laughs> that sounds mean to say. Everyone's entitled. Everyone has a butt. But I, <laughs> like, like, on Bumble, I'm on Bumble. I have a, a picture of myself that says Lady Liberty has a vagina. And just the other day, this guy messaged, like I said, hey, and he goes, Lady Liberty has a vagina, question mark? And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, hm, I thought she was just a hunk of metal. And I was like, yeah, um, but she's also a lady. Like, try, like he should understand. He goes, oh, I guess I just take things as they are. And da, da, da. And I just heard that, and I was like, God, you're cute. Like, it's not that he was saying anything really offensive. It was just the... I, I don't know if that was his humor. Like, I'm going to comment on this, like, clearly, like... Like, co- make a joke on a joke that's not really a joke. <laughs> a guy, when I was on dating apps, messaged me. He said, feminism is cancer. <gasps> what the hell is with that? Why would anyone not, like... Why did you go, if, if I'm not your type, why did you go out of your way to harass me? Yeah. I, I saw a guy and it said, I, uh, I like, he had, a, first off, he had a picture with a gun. Um, if I see a gun, by the way, boys, I'm immediately swiping left. That, why would I ever want to date someone who's like, yeah, I shot a thing. Anyway, um, but it said like, I, I hate like, I don't know, cats, Harry Potter and feminism. <laughs> like, three things. And not that I'm particularly a cat person. I don't mind cats. But, like, even so, like, that's such a thing. Like, I want you to know to think the things that I dislike. And if you agree with me on all three, we're going to be really well together. And I feel like those three things are very, like, controversial for, for women. <laughs> like, like that, that's one of those things that I, I don't know what he's going to gain from that. But that just blows my mind that anyone would want to outwardly say, like, I don't think you're equal to me. Just so you know, I want to fuck you, but in no way do I think you are of the same caliber. Or not, <laughs> and not even that, but even just, like, messaging me on a dating app to yeah. tell me, yeah. to insult to insult me, basically. Yeah. To insult my thoughts, my beliefs. Yeah. Dating in L.A. is so friggin' hard because there, just in no way has anyone ever felt comfortable going up to a random person... And in the, especially in this day and age when you can just fake f- looking at your phone like you're busy, even though you're just scrolling through Facebook for 20 minutes. But like 
to go up to somebody new who you find attractive and be like, hi, I know this is weird, but can we date? I'm sure someone would be very appreciative of that, but also like, if not, this has been your one time you've tried this. <laughs> and it feels like it's defined your whole dating routine. So I, I caved again, but I chose Bumble because the girl has to message the guy first and Tinder with dudes. I cannot, I can't get behind. Cause even if you put in your profile, like don't message me your gross messages, it doesn't matter. Like, and it blows my mind too because all these guys like they'll be like the really cute one you're like oh i hope he swipes right too and then they do that and you're like fuck <laughs> like, like i remember when uh all the harvey weinstein stuff came out a lot of people were saying well like harvey weinstein looks like a rapist it lo- looks like someone who would do something like that and i just thought they all do after you know they have no like you no one wants to assume everyone's a rapist <laughs> just by their looks but like the hottest guy can be the worst one. The last date I went on was this, you know, nice guy and he was very charming. And then we met. And the second we met, I was like, you look like my dad. Oh no. And my vagina just sewed itself up. Yeah. (laughs) A nice cross stitch. (laughs) And it was like, oh, he was so, so sweet. And he did everything right. And I just like, he just looked like a young version of my dad. Yeah. And the, and I asked my friends, and I was like, I, I don't want to see him again. I just had one date with him. Mm-hmm. But, like, what do I do? And they actually, they actually convinced me to ghost him, which, oh. which I think is, wasn't the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. I was like, I should just say I'm not interested. Yeah, um, absolutely. But, I, but everyone's like, you can't tell him that he looks like your dad. That'll ruin him. Well, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I would, I would have said, like, yo, you are lovely. I am just not in a place where I feel co- comfortable with this or just like in a placement where I thought I, or, or I just don't see it in a ram- romantic setting. I went on a date with this guy whose name was Norman, which is my father's name. And it actually did freak me out. But he, he went like he went by like he went by something else. But like Norman, like technically was his name. But we were hanging out. We smoked weed. We were like got lunch. We had like a nice time. But when we were smoking weed, I just, I wasn't attracted to him in that way, but he was a good dude. So I said to him, I was like, I said literally that I was like, yo, I don't feel like a romantic connection, but I want to hang out again. And he was just like, I feel that too. And I, and we did. And we hung out like once or twice more. And like, we're still friends on Facebook. We have no reason to hang out, but like, like it, that was the first time I ever felt like I could do that because I think I'd been on so many dates where I had been like, I don't know how to get rid of this person and not be an asshole. But I think by, by ghosting, that is being the asshole. And I recently dated this guy who was very sweet. We, we hit it off. Our first date was fantastic. Um, and I did something really weird on that date. I was like a little nervous cause I was a little bit late and I hate being late to shit like that. Cause I just feel like it's like interviews, bad first impressions, all that kind of crap. So we go to this restaurant And this guy opens the door for me and he looks at me like he's seen me forever and he knows me because we've been chatting. So I go, oh, hey. So I hug him and then he's like, oh, and I'm like, yeah. And then I look down and I realize he's wearing an apron and I realize this is not the guy I'm going on a date with. This is the waiter of the restaurant who opened the door for me. And I see and I'm like, "Uh, oh, and then I see the guy who I'm supposed to be on the date with. And they, they do not look alike. <laughs> like They're just two blonde guys, but very different face shape. Like, you like, but this guy, and I will say, this guy who was the waiter was very cute. So I was even more like, oh God, oh no, I didn't, no. And then, he, but like, he laughed it off with me. We had this wonderful date. We had a couple more, but we just like, I just don't think we were attracted to each other. We knew the other one was like gr- a great person, but it just didn't happen. So we started to kind of like fizzle out. We stopped texting. And then I was like, hey, just so you know, sorry, we kind of, you know, stopped there. And he goes, it's cool. It, it happens. How are you? And it was like, it was like a nice, ve- that was the first time, like, it was a very amenable, amenable, mm-hmm. kind breakup. <laughs> I love that you hugged the waiter. I really, I kind of want to go back to that restaurant and be like, yo, you probably don't remember me, but I thought you were that Bumble date and we hit it off. So. But like, the thing about it was that he looked like, he was ready to see me 
And that's what I think confused me. It's because usually like when people open a door, they'll like they'll look down and be like, yeah, here you go. It's all fine. Like not look you in the eye. But he and I like locked. He was cute. We were smiling. <laughs> like, and then after he was so nice, he was like, hey, I'll always take a hug. And I was like, oh, you're cute. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what happens with him. I wonder what his name is. <laughs> Dirty Girl is a podcast that you just listened to. Yay! It's produced by me, along with Cameron Taggy and Alex Salem. You can find us on Instagram at Dirty Girl Pod. Post a shitload of uber feminist stuff. You're gonna love it. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. Same handle, but Instagram is my fave. I am Heather Ann Gottlieb. I'll see you next time. Until then, take some time to be dirty today. Quick in a mouth.